Okay, so today I am going to talk about hash tables in our course data structures. Uh, so a hash table <coughs> is basic DNA abstract data type ADT uh, that supports uh, insertion, deletion and finding in constant average time which is a significant achievement. Uh, the worst case times would be on but we will be smart about the uh, hashing mechanism so we will mostly end up with the average time so it's a very practical data structure it is common it is everywhere as we will see in the applications but we should note that if you are into uh, interested in finding minimum maximum or sorted order printing etc and this data st structure is not convenient for you and the general idea is as follows uh, basically in a, a hash table is an array nothing more than that uh, with fixed size and it contains uh, items a stored item needs to have a data mem member which is called key that will be used in computing the integer index to that array so the key can be an integer already an integer but it should be mapped to the uh, array size uh, a key can also be a string then we should first convert it to integer and then map it to the table size 0 to table size minus 1 yeah, so the size of the array is the table size I will refer to it like that uh, and uh, items that are stored in hash table yeah, so just I mentioned from 0 to the table size minus 1 uh, so each key in is mapped into some number in this range from 0 to table size minus 1 and this number is called the hash value okay sometimes they also call it hash code but let's go with hash value and the mapping that uh, converts the key into hash value is called hash function uh, so hash is a very popular word but if you look at the big picture we are basically implementing the dictionary data structure hash table is one way to implement it the other way is direct access table uh, so I will show you the difference in a second hash table is more practical uh, mainly the problem with direct access table is the space complexity of that so applications spelling correction can be done with a dictionary uh, so uh, uh, how can I do it search the word in dictionary in uh, constant time constant average time uh, or if you are using direct access table it will be constant worst case time but let's not get lost in details now so search the word in dictionary if not found then slightly update some letters not all of them and search the new ones again until you find a hit and that hit will be your correction suggestion uh, and since directories are so fast we can afford many trials like that finding so control plus F control F or command F in Mac we do it all the time in the background we are using hash hash idea hashing idea dictionaries to find the pattern I will show you the algorithm for that in the end of this class authentication username and password these are pairs so you can uh, search for the username quickly in dictionary and to get the corresponding password for uh, authentication and many other applications so direct access table first of all the green part here is the key space space of all possible keys in direct access table I literally have one-to-one -one correspondence between each key space and a slot in this direct access table so the size is huge if I have n possibilities of keys like n is very huge if uh, we are talking about 32 bits integers and this size is 2 to the 32 right uh, this is huge but in reality I will be using a subset of keys uh, so that is the disadvantage but the advantage is the keys are one to one mapped to the slots here one slot per key uh, so then it will 
be wonderful very fast in, even in the worst case time in hash with hashing hash table you see it is very compact compared to direct access table it only deals with the size is om where m is the size of the key so it is optimal uh, but then the number of keys may be more than the slots in the hash table so there will be collisions uh, and i will be i should be able to handle them and i will handle them but in the worst case that handling will be linear not constant time but in average case that handling will lead me to get constant time or one time finding searching and deletion activities yeah so that is the idea let's give one little detail about that so in let's recall some mapping ideas injective as you recall it means one to one and surjective means on to so uh, this picture is like this so a bijection is one to one and on to meaning that every one in the target domain is uh, mapped it has a correspondence is, is in the mapping and no two guys go to the same guy so if we focus on our task our problem here with direct access table i have this one to one this this block so the, uh, and with hash table i have this general issue where two keys may be mapping to the same hash value with direct access table two keys will always map to different two hash values yeah so that is the idea uh, now let's get into business i will now focus on the hash tables okay not direct access tables because hash tables are more practical so these are my items uh, like names and phone numbers maybe salaries etc i will select one part as my key like the name part then i will feed this key into my hash function which will give me up give give me back an integer value called hash value so in this case apparently for key mary this function returns seven so that i can put the item about the about that key into slot 7 so the hash function must be simple to compute so I will reserve only constant time uh, I should reserve a constant time to compute it actually uh, and it should distribute the keys evenly among the cells so I don't want all the keys mapping into the first three cells for instance because I have other seven cells hanging around I should uh, be able to access those cells as well. Uh, and by the way, if we know which keys will occur in advance before the program runs, then we can write a perfect hashing function, hash function. Like I know that Mary Dave Phil Long will come, so I will. I can hard co code some indices for them, but it is not possible. So I cannot know in advance what keys will come to me so hash function keys can may not be numeric I have to deal with that number of possible keys is much larger than the space available in table I have to deal with that so different keys will probably map into the same location then uh, as you know hash function is not one-to-one -one from this picture not one-to-one -one. Uh, so there will be collisions if there are too many collisions then the performance will suck so i i should have mechanisms to resolve that issue maybe double the hash table size or be better in your hash function so there are solutions available hash functions if the input keys are integers a, a very common and a very reasonable choice is just key mod table size okay so because mod means the number will be in between zero and this value minus one so this is the size of my array my table so i am good unless key happens to have some undesirable properties so what do i mean by this if my keys are not distributed randomly so my distribution isn't random 
in other words all the keys are ending with zero for instance and I use mod 10 so what happens everyone like 10 20 40 250 they all going to map they all they are all going to map to index zero so what happened to the other slots in that case prime table size will be a good choice I will show you details on that later uh, but the thing is if your keys uh, are uniformly distributed in the universe then uh, there won't be any problem if the keys are strings uh, then I first need to convert it to a numeric value so let's start with this prime size table issue uh, keep in mind I will be using key mod table size so here is the fact every key that shares a common factor with table size will be hashed to a slot that is a multiple of this factor so for now let's just believe to this statement there will be a nice explanation later but if this is the case then again let me read it again every key that shares a common factor with table size so what so then I will use table size uh, I will use an M number for table size that has a very few amount of factors and then it's a prime number right prime numbers have very few factors in particular they will have only two factors one and itself so prime number is that's why the choice of table size so this is the whole idea this is the moment to pause actually but again if the keys are uniformly distributed then there will happen keys without a common factor with table size because all the keys are possible then I don't really have to deal with this uh, prime number issue because in that case the screen statement will not apply uh, so there will be many keys that don't share a common factor with table size uh, and that's why there won't be this bad hashing but let's now understand this green statement what I mean is the following so assume that I don't have a uniform distribution I have a pattern so in this case the keys have the pattern of being divisible by 15 so the keys are like 15 30 45 150 etc in that case if I use uh, a table size that is not prime so like like 15 then all these guys will map to the same slot right slot 0 now let's use a different table size and I will select the table size that has some shared factor with this pattern okay so 30 is my table size so every key like 45 it shares a common factor with 30 what is that common factor 15 so I will definitely map into a slot that is a factor of 15 like 1 times 15 which is 15 or 0 times 15 which is 15 like take another example 45 it has a common factor with table size table size 45 so let's take a number 60 it has a common factor with my table size 45 what is that 15 so it means that it will hash into a slot that is a factor of 15 multiple of 15 so yes it actually 60 will go to 1 times 15 so the multiple here is 1 similarly 30 uh, has a common factor of 15 so it will uh, map into 30 which is 2 times 15 etc so I can so this is the whole idea basically let me just give you more examples uh, again my keys have a pattern like they are multiples of 3 and I select a bad table size not a prime one like 12 so 12 and these guys will have some common factors so in particular here they all have the common factors of uh, 12 so they map into so it's zero right here the common factor will be three uh, 
and they will map to slot three times one three. Here again, they all have the common factor of three six eighteen thirteen. And they will map to a fact, uh, factor uh, the multiple of two three, which is two times three. Okay. So let's see, eighteen eighteen mod twelve is six. So it will be going to slot six. Thirty mod twelve is. 6 it will be going to slot 6 basic why is this happening because all these guys have a common factor of 3 with my uh, table size so I am going to map them to 3 times 2 yeah. so, so 2 times 3 which is slot 6 etc but what happens if I change this table size to a prime number see how my yellow lines get expanded here basically in this scenario uh, even if there is a pattern so keys have a pattern they are all multiples of 3 right 3 15 27 9 20 33 they are, they are exactly the same keys but see what is happening since 13 does not share a common factor with 3 then this green statement will not apply so this statement every key that shares a common factor with tables as will be hashed to a multiple of this factor but there is no such a factor so there is no pattern in the hashing and in particular if you really look at the distribution so 6 goes slot 6 and 18 goes slot 5 because of mod 13 30 goes to slot 4 and uh, I don't know 21 goes to slot 8 so you see I utilize all of the slots from uh, 0 to 11 in this case I am missing 7 but still good okay so that is the prime size issue I wanted to clear that up then uh, another issue it is important to have table size equal to theta number of keys why so theta means it is bounded from below and above right it is a lower bound and upper bound of number of keys so omega is like the lower one so table size must be at least number of keys so this it will be useful uh, for time complex the purposes later I will show you load factor I may come back to this slide later so if I keep the table size at least n number of keys then load factor will be constant I also need an upper bound if table size Big or big or of keys. I want that because then table size must be at most number of keys to make the space linear. So as uh, sink, let this sink down. Uh, table size must be at most number of keys. Uh, okay, so with that I will make the space linear in number of keys. So I will keep the space compact actually. So in other words the upper bound is about space complexity the lower bound about is about time complexity yeah that is a good uh, comment uh, now i will show you some uh, hashing hash functions we have also discussed already discussed key mod n where n is a table size preferable prime there are also other stuff like use the last uh, three digits by taking mod 10 one, 1000 all the time or the some other clustering and addition and then taking the mod or squaring so these are not quite popular actually I, I should say that I would go with the key mod and guy if my key is string however uh, there they must be converted to integers so to do that uh, we should get help from the ASCII values which run from 0 to 127 as we know so uh, one particular hash function for a given string key would just add those values up then what is the problem with that? it is simple to implement it is fast uh, uh, it is not that fast to be honest so if you look at here this action the one that I will use key more than it is an O1 action right 
regardless of what key is, there will be only one simple arithmetic operation. So key mod n, key mod table size. So it is all one. But this is not all one. This is all n actually. If the, if you have n, uh, n is the size of the string. Okay, so it's again fast, but uh, uh, it's it's not that fast. Uh, still the even worse problem is the following uh, uh, so if the table size is large this function does not distribute keys well enough because this has a, a boundary actually because the ASCII max value is 127 and uh, keys are I can safely assume that they are not longer than eight characters, like probably keys or the names or surnames, etc. Then the largest I can get is 1016, and if the table size is like 10,000, then I will be missing nine, 90,000 slots. They will be all empty all the time. It is a bad utilization. Hash function 2 tries to get bigger numbers by this tactic. What is this tactic? It will just use the first three characters. So see, this is like constant because I don't go through all characters. But again, uh, uh, first three characters will be multiplied by the powers of 27. Uh, but in, in theory, first three characters should give me almost 18,000 different words. But in, in practice, in English, all of these words do not happen. Actually, if you count them up, uh, there are about 3,000 words. Uh, uh, 3,000, not words, but uh, first three characters. They appear in about 3,000 different combinations. So again, this function uh, will not touch all the uh, possible values from 0 to table size. This one uh, can be considered good like uh, in this case I will be using all the characters of key again with some powers of 27 or 37 in this case uh, yeah so it is probably the best one uh, but again not as fast as this one so there are trade-offs uh, so in this case in the end this value is huge I need to mod it back I need to take the mod of it to map it from 0 to table size minus 1. So this is just a trick. Not a trick, but it's a safety issue. Uh, if I overflow like this, then I just use uh, a, a predefined value like uh, table size. Actually, it's plus equal, but so in case of overflow, you, you should pick a random uh, slot value basically so in, with that function id key, the key id will be mapping to this index and, uh, now let's get into collision business uh, when an element is inserted it hashes to the same value as an already inserted element it can happen and if it happens then we have a collision in our hand and we need to resolve it there are two ways separate cleaning and address open addressing let's begin with separate cleaning the idea is to keep a secondary data structure uh, so, uh, <clears throat> it is uh, as you feel from my voice it is kind of disappointing because i already have hash table now i'm in the second data structure uh, okay, so what is going to happen? The array elements, the hash table elements, are pointers to the first nodes of the linked list. So I will use linked list as my second data structure. You can use anything actually. Uh, but linked list will be fast to handle insertions in all one time. That's why I will go with linked lists here. Uh, then a new item is inserted to the front of the linked list. Again, front of the linked list. It's a constant time insertion. Just insert after the head. Uh, advantage is better space utilization for large items. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
and simple convolution handling we will just search the linked list uh, and again there will be linked list operations basically let me show the idea clearly uh, if these are my keys and I select key mod table size which is 10 uh, by the way so 10 is not a prime number but it's not a problem because there is no pattern in this key set it is totally uniform distributed so as I told you if it is the case then don't bother with the prime issue uh, now what is the separate cleaning zero maps to index zero but I don't put the item here I start a new linked list with the first node as zero one maps to here I start a new linked list so let me do it one by one start a new linked list with node one so this is the linked list tactic and the next of one will be node then later on 81 is inserted so I insert 81 as the first item to the front of the linked list so that's why I have this shape here 81 comes so this is the head so 81 here and then uh, it next so it has a next of the existing element which is one it and one comes with the null pointer of its next so they are all connected so that's why I have I see this 81 and 1 so the order here is important and then with that idea 4 and then 64 comes etc so initialization all entries are null find uh, locate the cell using hash function like key mode table size and then sequential search on linked list insertion locate and insert to the front of the linked list deletion locate cell and delete from the linked list so if i implement this basically look at here i have a set of linked lists the lists and so a vector is like any number of linked lists and they will all be keeping uh, vector of linked lists and uh, the items in linked lists will be hashed objects okay so if I now implement a function insert what is insert going to the x is the hashed object so first I feed x to my hash function okay uh, this, this hash function tells me which linked list to pick like if 64 and table size is 10 64 mod 10 it will tell me to use link 64 mod 10 for uh, so I will use the list for the fifth linked list in other words then what I do is uh, I try to find X in that good linked list the interested link interesting linked list if I find it then I do nothing because it already exists it's a total design decision but if I can't find it I just call the insert function of linked list so we have already discussed how this work basically you need to feed a value and you need to feed a linked list node pointer after which the x will be inserted in this case the pointer will be the zero the head the dummy head of the linked list remove again go to the feed I want to remove x from my life so learn the hash value of x with this function then it will give me the correct link list and from that this is the link list class remove function i just call the remove of the link list and you should remember the details of this function it's not our topic today you should believe that this removes that entry uh, <coughs> properly then find again same idea uh, I find the convenient list ID and I go to that list and I call find on that link list if found I return the pointer to that node which has the desired X uh, value so now let's analyze it collisions are likely uh, to 
give a formal description I need to introduce this load factor lambda it is basically the ratio of number of elements in the hash table to the hash table size so n over table size so if the table is complete the full then n uh, over table size will lambda will be one okay basically uh, now here is the important part we really need to understand this statement the average length of a linked list or of a chain like we are in separate chaining remember of a linked list is lambda why because of the following i have table size entries right so assuming uniform distribution one over table size probability for a key to go one of these table size slots okay and i will do it n times and independent trials and independent values so n over table size of them will go to one particular list another way to think about this is i have n over uh, table size let's call it m uh, i have uh, so this is for one slot i have m such slots so when you add m of them in the end m's go away i will have n items okay so this is another way to understand that lambda or n over m is the size of the linked list and this is the very crucial information so the average length of a linked list is lambda which is n over table size so this can be more than one if you have for instance 20 items hanging in your hash table but you have only 10 slots then lambda will be 2 20 over 10 is 2 the cost that is then uh, evaluation of the hash function so for the search link i need to evaluate the hash function so it will be constant time hopefully uh, it is actually it is key mod n it is a constant operation then i will traverse the linked list until i find it or maybe i will not find it but i need to traverse it so one plus expected linked list length which is one plus lambda uh, and let me just make a quick flashback here so this is one plus lambda remember my uh, upper bound lower bound business with the table size uh, here is the sudden flashback so this is omega table size must be at least number of keys then what happens the load factor becomes a constant then right n over m that's why so this is that slide 26 that's why i uh, need to keep uh, table size uh, large large enough they needs to be at least uh, the number of keys mm -hmm. yeah. so that is that fact now if I come back here uh, I know that uh, because then the circling will be constant and because this will be constant uh, so for an unsuccessful search I will do what I need to compare all lambda items in the linked list and I will all get uh, no hits so it will be one plus lambda for a successful search I will again go to the correct linked list in constant time with evaluation of hash function and then on average I have lambda elements so on average I will just look at lambda over to like this this is basic probability so again in big annotation this is also all lambda and again if I am able to keep lambda constant then the search cost will be constant yeah uh, so that is it actually the analysis shows that the table size is not really important but the load factor is important because it is all about lambda uh, table size should be as large as the number of expected elements in the hash table it will keep the load factor constant and one 
and table size should be prime for even distribution for for even distribution for nice distribution of keys to the hash table like for high utilization but if the input keys to begin with are already sufficiently random then priming prime table size in, is not a very critical issue let's do the second <coughs> uh, collision handling mechanism which is open addressing uh, so again we have seen separate training where we require I require you to implement a second data structure with open addressing I will not do that I will use only the hash table all the data will go inside the table the array thus a bigger table is needed okay uh, and generally the load factor should be below one and a half well, should be below half uh, because if it is one what is the load factor again n over n table size so if n is 20 and m is 20 then load factor is one it is unacceptable because there is no further slot for any new item but if i keep it 0 0.5 or below like i have 20 uh, slots but I will keep only 10 in my life this is okay it means that half of them is empty half of the table is empty so what if I get more items like uh, four more mm -hmm. items then I will double this size to 40 and so on. Yeah, so the idea is if a collision occurs alternative cells of the same table are going to be tried and there will be tried with three mechanisms so linear probing, quadratic probing and double hashing basically the idea is following I get my integer slot value using this function right in the separate training hash x obviously the name isn't so important but uh, so hash 64 it returns me 4 because hash x is x mod table size probably x mod table size let's call it ts uh, okay so 464 i will get 4 but if 4 is occupied uh, then i will try a different value in the i trial i iteration of trying in the i trial i will use a different uh, so from 64 mod 10 there will be four so i will first try index four if it is occupied i will go to a different index and that will be my actual index that i will use to populate the hash table so that's why i call this a trial the i trial initially so f i f zero is zero okay so initially this is always zero so i will try the fourth slot slot for it. but then uh, if i am with linear probing f i will be equal to i basically there can be any linear uh, function of i but f i i identity is very popular so in the next i equal to one i will select four plus one five then six then seven right so this is linear probing in quadratic probing i use f i equal to i square that is the idea. So I first try zero, obviously down one. Then in the second trial, second square, two squares, uh, four. Then if I still can't put it to slot eight, so four plus four is eight. Eight is already occupied. So in the third trial, I will try nine. The fourth, so it, I will try 13. Okay, that is the idea. And for double hashing, uh, I will use a second hash function here. So instead of this, I will use a second hash function, it's called h2, and I will feed the, an x to that hash function. So it is uh, there is no, so it's a hash function, there is no. Uh, it's not a regular function and I will 
multiply the result with i to make it a normal answer. So that is the idea. Let's now go wild with it. Uh, let's put it clock. This is okay. Uh, so in linear probing, okay, just as I said, let's now insert these guys to the hash table of size 10. 89 mod 10 is 9, not occupied, insert. 18 mod 10 is 8, not occupied, insert. 49 mod 10 is 9, 1 is occupied, try the next one, put it here. 8, 58 wants to come here, so he wants to come here. Occupy, try next, try next, try next, or go linearly. Then 9 uh, wants to come here, go next, or next, or next. So it is very clear, I guess. So now, how do I do a find here? Uh, uh, so it follows the same probe sequence as the insert algorithm. Like a find for 58 would involve 4 probes because I have used 4 probes while inserting 58. Okay, that is the idea. For deletion, we use laser deletion. So we don't physically remove the item, we just mark it so as not to use it later. But it should physically be there. Why do I do it? Because uh, let's think that I don't do it, then I will have problems in the sorting mechanism. So for instance, if here I remove at this final hash table, I remove 89 of okay. So if I physically remove this, Later, I may want to find 58. So what happens? After 18, I have an empty slot. So I say that stop searching because it is empty. There is no connection to the other side. So I wouldn't be able to find 58 even if it exists in my base structure. So instead, I don't physically remove 89. I just mark it like uh, remove equal to true. So if someone tries to find 89, he will find it, but he will not return it because it is marked and marked. And if someone tries to find 58, he will be able to go to that node. So what is the problem here? As long as the table is big enough, a free server will be found, obviously, eventually. But the time will be very large. Uh, Worse, even if the table size is relatively empty, blocks of occupied cells start forming. So in this, it is already starting here. So all the millions of cells may be empty here, but if I am inserting something uh, that needs to go to slot 8, I need to go through all this cluster. So it is all connected right from here to cluster of size 5. So this is called primary clustering problem. And any key hashes into the cluster will require several attempts to resolve collision. Then it will also then it will also grow the cluster. So it will also make the situation worse. And so with that in mind, if you analyze the insertion, I won't go to the proof of this, but there will be this many probing. This probing means like trial. This many trial. So if you plug one over two here, you end up with this scalar output. So it says that for a full uh, half full table, uh, about two and a half uh, number of trials will be needed for an insertion, which is okay, except it's a constant number. Uh, so yeah, that's the issue. Uh, and remember, lambda will never be more than one, so it will never be uh, 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 a number here, etc. Et uh, so this I won't prove. I want to prove this, but this is the way number of probes go. Uh, so for a find, so this was insertion. For a find, unsuccessful search cost the same as insertion because uh, you got that many crops. The cost of a successful search is equal to the cost of inserting X at the time X was inserted. So what does it mean? Uh, cost of a successful search of X. Uh, 
again, it is a reasonable statement because when I want to search for 58, for instance, I need to do one, two, three, four shots, four props, and it is not coincidence that I have used four props to insert 58. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, so it is basically telling that. Yeah, so with half empty table, the average cost of insertion is two and a half. The average cost of finding is also 2.5. Uh, thus, the average cost of successful search is an average of the insertion cost or, or smaller load factors. So it's clear, I guess. So, uh, average cost of finds, uh, remember. Uh, it is roughly this number. The average number of sense that are examined in a successful search. Uh, so, in an unsuccessful search, I need to go through all values. In successful search, I would stop at some point, so it should say expected to be lower. Uh, yeah, and this is basically coming from by testing all possible lambda values from 0 to lambda uh, continuously uh, basically I am implementing I am running this function here so that is the idea now let's do some counting so this is uh, this is a popular example in for instance it's not that creative but it measures knowledge so you also measure your creativity it's other questions like the ones in the end of the slideshow, but here it is rather a knowledge based question. So, if this is your uh, hash function, so what is the average number of probes for a successful search? For 20, 20 mod 11 is 9. I go here in one probe, in one shot, so I am done. So, 1 is the contribution of 20. But how about 13? 13 mod 11 is 2. So go to 2, not 13, try the next because it's a linear problem okay, so I do 2 probes, so for 13 which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, I have 2 contributions so with that you use all the contributions in this case I have 2, 4, 6, 8 uh, keys items in my hash table so 8 numbers divided by 8 this will be your average for, for a successful set for unsuccessful ones I need to analyze the situation at every slot so if some uh, key maps to index 0 like what can map 22 and 22 isn't here so I will map here one probe uh, and I will go further empty so two probe for slot 0 uh, if some value like 12 is searched it's unsuccessful so it doesn't exist here 12 mod 11 is 1 but I can immediately understand that it's an unsuccessful search because it's already empty so for index 1 I have one contribution with that idea I have 11 indices I have 11 different contributions divided by 11 get the average okay that's the idea Quadratic probing is uh, the same idea, exactly, I will use fi equal to i squared, that is the only difference, as I mentioned before, so it is supposed to uh, reduce this primary clustering effect, so that is the motivation, because primary clustering is a big problem, as you have seen. So with that in mind, uh, 89 comes to index 9, 18 comes to index 8, no collision. Now 49 wants to come here, there is a collision. So go next, i equal to 1, because i equal to 0 is the first uh, trial, i equal to 1. Instead 1 square, just go 1 step further, and it is empty, so put 49 here. Now it will be fun, I think, 58, I want to come here not available so i becomes one one square means go look one ahead occupy then i becomes two 
two squares go look four ahead. So this is one, two, three, four. Put it here at four. For uh, nine, I want to come here, uh, occupy it. Try next, occupy it. Try uh, the fourth index, so three, two, three, four. Put nine here. Yeah, so uh, we may not be sure that we will probe all locations. So with linear probing, I am looking at them one by one until I find the hit. With quadratic probing, I am jumping ahead. So uh, there is no guarantee to find an empty cell if table is more than half full. So if it is quite popular, but we are good actually. But if Hash table size is not prime, this is a big problem. So we are good because uh, we, I know that if table is at least half empty and the size is prime, then all quadratic probes will eventually lead me to an empty place to land. Uh, yeah, so here this is just a little trick. Uh, quadratic means taking some multiplications, you can avoid it by using the previous value to get the next. Well, but this is really not that a big deal. Uh, so, if the load factor gets high, uh, there may be problems as we have just seen, then we need to do rehashing. So, it's an important term. Know this uh, dynamic expand the table as soon as the load factor reaches 0 0.5. So, I double the size and I go to the next prime number and since now I have a new size, table size, all my hash function updates, so I reuse that. Uh, I re I use a new hash function with the new table size to do all the hashing from scratch. So that's why it's called rehashing. Okay. Uh, now I want to introduce a problem with quadratic probing. It is called the secondary clustering, not the primary. What is that? So all the quadratic problem eliminates primary clustering. So by the way, we have seen it here, right? There is no real cluster, so this is not connected here. Unlike the uh, linear probing where I always have a cluster of size five. Um, so what am I talking about here? Okay. So secondary clustering is the following. I don't have a particularly visible cluster, uh, but I have this problem. Uh, I will be touching the same entries until I find a find an empty spot slot. Uh, so for instance, if here I want to insert 89, it tries here, then here, then here, and then so this is the fourth one. Then I do the ninth. Uh, advanced advance of size offset 9 so this is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 so I put 89 here ok now if now I want to insert 78 I will again start from this place that it needs to start then I try here so see I am doing the same thing then I try here it is fourth. Then I try here, which is ninth. Then I need to try the sixteen. So nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So seventy-eight comes here. But as you see, I go through the same steps. So it is kind of redundant. So it, there is nothing you can do about it. It is called secondary clustering problem. There is some little thing you can do about it. You need to change your thinking mechanism you need to use a different uh, open addressing called double hashing in that case just as I told you before uh, for the offset advancement I use a second hash function times I so first things first if this hash function evaluates to zero for some even for, for some item for some key then it sucks right because zero times anything any trial number like the eight trial it will be zero so remember fi is the plus fi so i need to i have this hash function uh, x plus fi so if 
this fi is always zero then basically i am not advancing at all i am i got stuck at that weird location so it is uh, an infinite loop so you cannot survive from it it's very bad so okay we understand that it should never evaluate to zero so here is a good function for you that is also popular like r minus x model given x where r is a prime smaller than table size so uh, let's digest this with an example for this example so what is happening here i want to insert 99 to the previous example so where is the previous example it's probably this one 99 so what is going to happen what is 99 going to what is hash 2 going to evaluate for 99 it would be 7 minus uh, something less than 7 because of mod 7 99 mod 7 is what uh, what uh, 70 so 98 we have a 98 so it's 99 mod 7 is 1 Okay, uh, so 7 minus 1, 6. Basically, my hash function will return value 6 for uh, the insertion of key 99. It is okay. Then I will use different co configurations of different multiples of 6 as I try further and further. So, first I will try 0, then I will try. 6 if I still can't succeed I will try 12 if can't I will try 18 etc so let's first try what am I doing I'm inserting 99 okay here so 99 comes here occupied uh, then I try 6 further so 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 before that I just found space in no time in the, in the first row when i is one so 99 is inserted like that so uh, let's do some uh, plotting then uh, given the density of the uh, hash table which is called load factor lambda uh, as as i make my table denser and denser separate chaining does not increase the number of probes it is reasonable right why because uh, it doesn't really care it's a successful search so it uh, it's the correct uh, link list and uh, it looks uh, at the entry of that link list which has a constant expected size so it is a constant figure here with linear probing as my uh, hash table gets populated and populated, the number of probes increases. Okay, uh, quadratic and double hashing uh, has a better uh, rate, has a smaller growth rate, so that's why it's uh, preferable. It should be our choice. And for unsuccessful search, these rates will increase, but the order keeps the same. Now I will do it, finish with some applications. Uh, compilers use it all the time to map symbol to internet symbol tables. Transposition tables are also hash tables used in game programs. Spell checkers I have discussed it in the very beginning. And now I will do this control find thing. Sorting a substring in your uh, full text, it can be your Chrome browser text, you can be certain in Word document, in PDF, etc. But this is the thing that will be implemented Robin Carp algorithm. But before that, let me give you the naive solution. String matching can be done in n, so n is the size of the text, and n is the small one size of the pattern, subtext, substring. So what you do is you start from the first index. You have this window of size 3, size n, you try this, not a net, then 
you start from the next item and next item so you try all n items n starting points and then you do n character tests uh, m of them must be matching with m of the current window so this all nm it is worst case time uh, will be improved significantly to a linear time uh, with the following algorithm it will be an average runtime complexity but it will occur uh, a lot so we will not go towards worst case time because of our hash function tricks that I will show you uh, but you should keep that in mind it will in theory we have this all nm worst complexity in Robin Carp as well but in average time it will rock into the uh, so the idea is use a hash value not the string itself be careful use a hash value to avoid clicking the substring in the text okay if the hash value is matching only then do the clicking that is the idea of the control find thing or command five if you are a Mac person so to do that convert query String substring, which is a key, right? In hash terminology, to a hash value, and then do the same as a window advances to the text. But it won't make any sense if I do this uh, hash value conversion naively. I will do rolling hash function, a new concept to, for a quick conversion. So, for the current window, what will be my hash value? It will be like this. New hash value is quickly found, even only the old hash value, the old value removed from the window, and the new value added to the new window. So let me be clear. Hash of the key, remember key is a string, so normally we use ASCII characters, but let's keep numbers small, so for A I will use one, for B two, for F6, etc. And my alphabet will have nine letters on me. Just assumptions for simplicity so hash function will add all them up so in for the substring bca it will be like 4 plus 3 plus 1 8 okay now start here so here is the rolling hash idea it's a very cool idea what is the window hash it is 3 plus 6 plus 1 right let's look at the mapping here it is 10. 10 and 8, they are not hit, so I don't do the OM cost string uh, test because their hash values are not consistent to be in. Then, when I advance the window, see what is happening. Remove old, add new. So I have the 10 value, from that I remove C and I add B. So 10 minus C, C cos 3 and B cos 2. So what is this number? 9, not a hit, continue. Now I have 9 in my hand. Remove F, which is the cost of 6, ASCII of 6, whatever, plus add the newcomer E, 5. This is 8. And DCA also has 8. So this is a false hit is a false positive but I can know it so I trigger my OM time test which is very unfortunate then because it will return false because other is not equal to DCA then I slide it like to BEA get this old value 8 remove A minus 1 add new A plus 1 still a false hit 8 8 uh, again I trigger it, uh, then E, E, D, it goes uh, to a hash value of uh, 10, then it goes to a hash value of 8, another false hit, then finally it goes to a hash value of, of 8, and then finally it is the real deal. So it is, this OM test will make sense now. Uh, so what just happened, I have done 3 over 7, so I have 7 advances, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, six, seven, and three of them were terrible, were false. It's almost half. It is unacceptable. Like uh, what happened? I called this n time test n over two times, half the time. So what just happened? Or n times n over two? I had or n n or n m whatever but it's the, it is uh, the worst case behavior actually. Okay. But I can improve this by picking a better hash function. Okay, I will keep the rolling idea, but my hash function will be this. Basically, every uh, letter will have these values like C3, D4, it is fixed, it is ASCII value, but here I will multiply them by the powers of A, where A is the number of letters in the alphabet. So in this case, first of all, DCA, so what is the hash value of DCA? Uh, so I have 9 in my base, right? So 9 to the power of 2. Uh, and B cost, cost of B is 4, I think, right? B is the 4 character. 4 times 36 plus. And C cost is 3. 3 times 9. Be careful, I am reducing the exponent. Plus. Uh, what is that? This a, a is 1 and 1 times 1 because 9 to the power of 0 is 1. So it is what? 36 times 4 is 144 plus 28. What? 36 times 4 is 44. Plus uh, 27, 28. Okay, it is wrong, so this value, but it won't affect the idea. But so the hash value of this here will be uh, equal to in my calculations. I will click the button and it is correct. So 26 plus. Okay, so I'm 46 times 4 plus 28. It's, it's supposed to be 172. But it won't affect the results, don't worry. It's just a bad uh, moment for me when I was preparing the slide anyway. So let's not focus and lose the focus here. So I will do the sliding. So for CFA, I will do the C3 times 9 to the 2 plus 6 is the cost of F times 9 plus 1, which is 298. It is not equal to 172. So wonderful, there is no triggering. There is no uh, test of character. There is no character test because hash values are not consistent. Now, this is the wonderful part. When I advance to the next window, what happens? Basically, F and A, they will now have better power. So basically, F will have will be exposed to 9 to the 2, not 9. And B, A will be exposed to 9 to the 1, not 9 to the 0. And also, there will be a newcomer too with a... Uh, with a factor of 9 to the power of 0, so 2 times 1, is it's 2. So, but I don't want to compute it by doing these three uh, additions manually from scratch. I will use the existing result. How will I do it? So, remember this was the old value. Basically, I will get rid of the first cost because of C. I will move it from my life. And now I have, I end up with this. Uh, so this will cancel this, right? If you look carefully. Then to make the power of, uh, to make the <coughs> partner of 6, 9 to the 2, I need to multiply this with 9. And similarly, I need to multiply 1 with 9. So I have this global 9 
hanging out of the parentheses and then only then I will add newcomer with a times one factor so what is newcomer? it is b, b has a cost of 2 so if you do this arithmetic I have this value 497 which is not equal to 172 so continue ok so that was the idea next let me do one more step then I slide it one more get the old value get rid of the uh, first of the previous the cost of the first of the previous window it is F so I, I can complete this cost in some arithmetic operation then times the base which is 9 plus the new common E which is 5 this gives me 104 it is not equal to the hash code of hash value BC continue 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 so if you do it until the end I will be hitting only uh, for I will be doing a good hit one time and I need to do it actually because I have DCA in my input in my string and substitute is DCA and this is the optimal result one over seven. So there are some issues you can improve like uh, since I am the powers of A and, uh, okay here the substitute is three characters so power go up to two but it can go quite enormously with larger substrings so to prevent overflow you can you may want to take modular amount of this eight uh, in, in, and you need to do this before the overflow happens so one way to do it in addition is like this so I have A and I have X so if A plus X would create an overflow I don't do that operation I just test it like that so you will convert this into modular modes this is for overflow for additions yeah so that was the huge Robin Corp idea we are over it let's call it the uh, easier but still creative uh, problems number of pairs with even sum so in this array sum is 7 I can get it by 3 plus 4 or 2 plus 5 naive algorithm is what start with this i the first look at all the others for the partner of 4 because I need 4 uh, so I increase count by 1 then for that look at all the others for the partner of 3 etc so it takes all n square right n items each of one looks n as n minus i items n square which is that naive solution uh, actually you can import this to n log n by first sorting this and what happens I have 2 3 4 5 and the 1 million uh, then the good news is I can use binary search right start with i from beginning and in this sorted sub array do a binary search in log n time ok so log n time do it n times and log n. and initially the sort is also n log n anyway but I will give a o n solution it will be average time because I will use a hash table and so it will take o n time uh, o n operations because n insertions each of which takes all one time uh, and I will use hash hashing to get my partner but it will be on yeah it will be on worst case time also if I use a direct access table so here is a nostalgia for us what was the direct access table I will use uh, I will avoid collisions definitely by keeping my table very big as big as the range of this data and in here I picked one million on purpose actually then you need to reserve this many entries so space complex is linear in range not in number of items okay you will have one million entries and they will be uh, free most of it will be a very sparse table but it will help you do all your actions in worst 
time complexity, but again the space will be terrible. Sort locations for an array. So the problem here is, given an array, I want to output a different array where uh, for this thing I will use zero because it is the minimum element. So in the sorted version, this will be in index zero. This will be in index one. This will be in index two. This will be in index three, and this one million will be in index four. So naively go through this once, find the minimum, make it zero. Okay, then go through this again, skip the zeros, find the minimum of this, and make it one. The next of zero is one because like that. So you do find min n times or n square. I can do it in n log n time though. How I create a new array called temp. It will be the sorted version of this. So it will be two, three, four, five, and one million. Okay. Uh, so this is called temp TMP. Now I will have a hash table that uh, stores the mapping of numbers and their locations so as i go through this temp array so i will map to to a hash table and as its entry so wherever it maps as its entry i will just use number zero because zero is the index here i, I know it because i am tra i am traversing this array then three will map somewhere depending on my hash function uh, and i will put value one for three and later in the last step i traverse through a so i, I start with three i go to my hash table with for key three so uh, key is hashed uh, i use my hash function with input three i come here and i read value one and I put this value to my output. Okay, so again, sorting is n log n, and all these inserts and finds are constant time on average with a hash table, uh, but you need to do it for n times, for n items, so, or n, again, n log n dominates. But again, with worst case, time, next to each of the uh, search and find and insert will take all n time and you will do n of them so n square would be the worst case of the hash table version direct access table will be supporting all one in the worst case for the search and insert uh, insert so that is that but again it will be a terrible space complex it will have a terrible space complexity and finally i think this was my last example largest subset with consecutive numbers so in this input it would be one two three four right because consecutive uh, there is only one clump between items so one two three four it is the longest i also have 10 11 but it has a size two so this is not uh, longest so how do i do it insert all elements into hash table okay for this case it happens to be my hash table now traverse array with the following strategy for next number x uh, so one is my first number x is one is zero in the hash table no so it will be clear later so i am in this block so a sequence is starting because zero was not in the table so it means that one is a fresh start so append one and make x2 uh, two is in the hash table make x3 three is in the hash table make x4 four is in the hash table make x5 look here five is not in the x hash table so five is not in the hash table so and this is the end of my sequence size is four Four is better than nothing, so champion is currently this. Then what happens? I am at the next, so x is three now. So now this if part makes sense because three minus one is two, 
2 is already in the hash table so it means that I already I will maybe later or maybe I have already done that but uh, I will have a sequence starting with 2 and that sequence will definitely beat the one that starts with 3 because it's certain has one more element 2 right and that's why I do not think do not think uh, so 2 is like that uh, sorry 3 is like that now 8 8 minus 1 7 isn't in the hash table so fresh start uh, put it to the list 8 8 plus 1 9 isn't here so finish size of seconds is 1 not better than 4 so don't update done 14 etc so you get the logic uh, and I can implement this just the way I told you like this is looking at the x minus 1 etc now let's analyze this uh, so that algorithm is number 3 before I will also show some naive solutions like for each element e for one look at uh, for each element e uh, look at one above of it so for one look at two uh, if I find then look at three etc so in other words for every element look at all other n minus one elements so or n square terrible I can do it in n log n time. I can sort it in n log n time to this version and then start with one, track until four because all one jumps, wonderful. Then there is more than one clump, in particular, four is the amount of clump, but it doesn't matter. So the size here is four because I can keep track of that. Then from eight, one further nine, so track until 8 there is not trace start from 8 I did that start from 10 11 is okay so size is 2 not better than 4 so don't update the campaign so what is happening here and login for sorting and then I do only one pass linearly you know n time but because of n login it sucks now let's analyze the hashing version hash this algorithm okay this one so here is the smart thinking. So I like the analysis of this actually, it's quite nice. For each cluster of size k, right, we will have clusters of size k. k can be 1, k can be b, k, etc. But there will be clusters. So we do k successful find if you are the starter item, basically, the, if basically the uh, else block okay so this is wrong actually that's it sorry I was uh, not careful enough when writing this uh, complex analysis so this is the else block I do k finds and then I don't and then I quit so I have a cost of k because every find is one time constant time so cost of k then for the k minus one non starters remember i am dealing with a cluster of size k there will be only one starter and k minus one non starter for every non starter i hit the if block right so we just experienced it so three was a non starter i hit the if block uh, because 2 was in the hash table, right? So it took only one operation. Uh, but I will have k minus 1 of them. So in total, moral of the story is for a cluster of size k, the cost is 2k minus 1. Okay? Uh, there will be. So now let's do the analysis. There will be clusters, one will be very big, one will be very small, one will be mediocre, etc. Uh, so, for all clusters, I sum this 2k minus i for i cluster, where i goes from 0 to uh, number of clusters. So, if you open this, what is happening? 2 is i 
put it in front because it doesn't depend on her. So i times ki. Ki is the size of the i cluster. And if I sum all the cluster sizes, I have n. n is the total array size, input size. I have 2n because of 2. So what is the other issue? I have these minus clusters and I count it from i equal to 0 to the amount of clusters. So basically I am uh, so sorry uh, it is that I am so I did this part okay I K I so it is done. Now I will do this part sum of minus ones how many sum I will do number of clusters many sums so 2 and minus number of clusters and it is one actually in the worst case I will have one huge cluster right so it will be 2n minus 1 which is still n and in the best case the clusters each cluster will be of size 1 so basically the input will be like that I could uh, cut the input here so this will be my input right this is one cluster second cluster third cluster fourth cluster each of size 1 in that case uh, there will be n clusters, 2n minus n, it is n and it is still on. And finally, in summary, we have seen that hash tables can be implemented. The hash tables can be used to implement dictionaries, just like direct access tables, but hash tables are more popular because Direct access tables have infeasible space complexity. Hash tables are very practical in terms of space complexity and in terms of time complexity, it is still wonderful. It has constant average time behavior. Uh, and it depends on the density of the table, hash table, which is called load factor, not the number of keys in my life. So the load factor is important. It is important to have a prime size table size. Uh, and the correct choice of load factor and the hash function so these three issues we have uh, discussed truly uh, truly uh, and for separate chaining the load factor should be close to one to populate uh, the hash table uh, properly and for open addressing it shouldn't exceed 0 0.5 because I, I don't have a second helper data structure here if it exceeds 0 0.5 it means that it is getting too dense so i rehash rehash means the grow the hash table uh, and transfer everything to the new one yeah so these are the uh, summarized items so one last sentence can be hash tables can be used to implement in certain find operations in constant average and this is a very significant uh, effect uh, yeah so with that i will stop thanks